gentlemen, it's raining out the side and it's fuck all Friday. Remember, nobody works, nobody gets hurt. We're gonna uh, go through some of this engine nerding Lego. I was doing hydraulic titty bits, named it something Nuglets. I'm changing the name. It's gonna be engine nerding Lego because the entire world is magic until you realize how the world works and it's all just Lego bits that fit together nicely. Here's the problem when you're learning something new. Half the battle is learning what the Jesus thing is, what the name of it is. Because if you don't have a name for it, then you can't tokenize it. You don't have a token in your mind wherein you can manipulate things to put them together. The Logos is the reality. Words are your reality. If we don't have the word for it, you know, the thing fits in the thing. It does the spinny thing. And it, so what we have here is a motor. I don't know what type. I have a sneaking suspicion it's a lobed gear rotor. Spins super fast. If you were here, oh, about 100 years ago, I made an impact crusher out of this. What for crushing gold ore? And I get the gold ore out of rocks, of all things. So what we have here, just to help young fellows out, is we have a coupling. And this is a Lovejoy style coupling, about 100 years old. And it has a plastic urethane uh, coupling. I call this a spider as well. You can see the Lovejoy coupling is this style with the three. There's all kinds of different couplings. What the coupling does, it allows for some misalignment. And it takes up vibration. So this is the coupling goes on the shaft. The shaft will either be splined or in this case, it's keyed. And then it's retained, that key is retained by a set screw. Now the key can be a stepped key, it can be two different sizes, or it can be a woodruff key, which is a half moon shaped key, or it can be just a regular square cross section key. It can also be a rectangular cross section key. Again, these are all standards. So if you go to the SAE website or look up pump standards for SAE, all of these pumps will be on that specification. So you'll be able to cross-reference all of these pumps. Lego, it's all Lego. And then it'll have a mounting plate. Now this mounting plate will have an SAE designation for mounting the pump but this appears to be some sort of proprietary system out here. Some sort of piece of mining gear. And then of course the fittings, they will also be standardized. The good thing about standards is none of them match together. So somebody comes along and makes one standard to rule them all that doesn't match any of the rest of them. <laughs> I don't make the rules. And by eye, these fittings will be dash eight JIC male. Dash eight just means a half an inch. Dash sizes are sixteenths of an inch. So eight sixteenths of an inch is half an inch. And then we'll have some metric or some BSP, likely BSP, British Standard Parallel Pipe into the actual motor. And then there'll be a bonded seal ring here. What actually keeps in the magic schmoo. Having a little trouble getting into the meat of her here on account of this thick epoxy paint. But before I illuminate the subject by swinging around my flashlight. Flashlight. I never owned one of those, specifically not the Stoya model. We got to get rid of some of that schmutz. And then some tappy tap tap. This looks like a job for the vice. Whoa, look at that. Three risers. This is gonna be interesting. Uh -huh. Whoa. Ooh, a manifold? Is that what that is? Oh no. Wow. Let's witness mark that. I was gonna mention to you, it's a, not a bad idea to keep one fastener in place so you can kind of guide yourself out and that way if you get into 
something doesn't quite look right, you can always get yourself back to the start, like so. That goes on. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, that's it. It's never going back together. Have a sniff wise at that. Whew. She has had some hot suppers. Stanky. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. This is not your typical everyday tractor supply pump motor. Oh man, look at that. Okay, so that fits in, what? Oh, I see, okay. So that goes in there like that. Like that. And that's so tight. And then that just gets spun around like that. Oh, it's so tight. Yeah, man, this one is really cool. I don't believe this part is the motor itself. I have a feeling it's the valve. It's the valve. That's why there's two attachment points. The motor is actually spinning the rotary valve, which blocks and or covers and uncovers ports. See all these various ports here? One, two, three, four, five. On the subject of couplings and their associated set screws, I'm gonna show you a trick here and you'll forget all about it until you learn the hard way. Some of us are smart enough to learn from other people's mistakes. I'm not that smart. I gotta make all my own mistakes. Sometimes what some wily millrong will do is I'll put two set screws. Ha! So you think you're loosening off. And the reason they do that, one, to screw up new guys. <laughs> but, but really, so that the first set screw, the set screw what retains the shear pin there, this, uh, you know, the thing for the thing, doesn't back off. So they'll put a second set screw in there to prevent the first set screw, what's actually doing the job, from backing itself out. So if you have a set screw, don't just loose it off. Take it right out so that you can see what's in the hole. You can shut her down now. That, that, that one right there is worth the price of admission. This is quite a thro small three-jaw puller and it's a little bit too tight. What we could do is flip the jaws around. I'm just going to give her a little tappy tap tap. You see, there's not enough clearance. Oh, in Hammer We Trust, there is enough. We made our own clearance. Oh, witness now the walk of shame. Fool me, <laughs> fool me once. Remember the days when Al Gore's interwebs was still new and fresh? People used to go to websites and discuss things, message boards, and there'd always be some old codger on there, <laughs> gatekeeping. Or any mechanic that uses one of these adjustable wrenches is not a mechanic at all, he's an animal. <laughs> and, and so forth and so on. And now you see guys on Pakistani truck channel rebuilding a freighter, a, an oil tanker with an oxyacetylene torch and 
flip-flops. <laughs> Those old men are still on the internet, fighting bots to this day. Yeah. Hey, you know what that's for? Those two notches are ground in there for? You go ahead and put it in the doobly do so Fapoff can steal your idea. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you have probably never had a brake pot explode in your face. Ah. Aha! Not so fucking tough now, are you? Quite a little gadget here. There's a retention plate with bend over tabs for the fasteners, three fasteners. And then the shaft, the output shaft, oh, look at this. Silicon carney, red for high heat. And then this shaft comes, oh, we gotta take the, I gotta take this guy out, the key. That's the shape of the key. They do that so that it's retained. It can't slide out forward and off the, key, off the shaft. Come in here with a milling cutter. Sorry about that. Wow, man. Now, speaking of having the lexicon of the technology, I don't know what to call this. It's a motor with well, the only spinning part is the rotor, the central rotor, and the valve. And the valve is tied via this guy. A Skookumer's frig. And if you look at the body, super beefy, and there's all kinds of ports in the body as well. So what must be happening is that sequentially the valve is opening a port to allow oil to flow in behind this machined groove, pressurize it, and get it spinning, and as it spins, it opens the next port to uh, tank. I'm going to have to look this one up. I'm not entirely sure what to call it or how it works. Cooler as frig, man. I call this a win. I'm stumped. I'd, some sort of grooved rotor motor. There's only what the one bearing. Well, there's the whole thing's a bearing element. This is super skookum. It'll last forever because this whole thing is a bearing. Bathed in oil. So hydrodynamically would increase the pressure in that oil wedge to keep it from touching metal on metal. It's its own bearing. And then we just have a little thrust bearing here for when you're whacking on it with a hammer. Yeah, this thing's cool, man. If you know what this is called and where I should go to find out more about it, please do tell. It's something hydraulic. A man hydraulic, maybe? Tough to tell. Please, if you know what the hell this is called, help a brother out. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice. I had a set in a stink about this, sparse documentation on this, but I did find it ADAN Hydraulics out of the UK. They call it an orp, no. Dan Foss calls it an orbit motor. Uh, OMM type motor, it's high torque, low speed. Adan calls it a plate, no, a spool valve motor. Spool valve motor, sure looks like a spool valve. How it works, and yeah, yeah, it's for driving brushes and 
and low speed things that need high torque but got to spin them a thing quite a bit. Kind of in between a regular motor and a high lock, high torque thingy. Pretty sparse on the documentation as to how it works. Oil goes in, oil comes out. And I guess if it's the fuck A, you chuck it away. No user repairable parts. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.